Hi everyone, Kate here for a casual Friday reads. I hope that you are all having a good uh, January thus far and it is a very cozy rainy bookish day here so I'm really looking forward to um, spending some time reading this afternoon and if I can stay awake for it sometime this evening. I've been having lots of trouble reading in the evening so I think maybe audiobooks should be what I'll do in the evening while I'm um, knitting or just doing other stuff I think maybe I'll be more likely to actually get some done but I mean it's kind of comical last night I was trying to read and just like could not hold my head up much less keep my eyes open um, so anyhow what I will be reading this weekend the first is a buddy read I will be starting with uh, Carolyn from BBC Girl and Katie from Books and Things and we'll be starting this tomorrow and that is the Sidiford mystery let's see if I can get it to show up I don't know how people do this, but I wanted to show you a picture because it's the ebook that I'm reading of this. But anyhow, it's by Agatha Christie. Um, I wonder if I make it less bright if it would show up. Let's see. Hmm. Just testing this out. Nope. Not going to happen. Well, anyhow, so the Sidiford mystery is uh, a like... Um, there's a house party and I think they're playing with a Ouija board and it like predicts that a murder is going to happen and then lo and behold a murder does happen. The synopsis is kind of vague on Goodreads so I didn't I kind of had trouble figuring it out but now that I do like Agatha Christie I'm kind of up for reading anything from her um, and Carolyn wanted to read that so I was totally up for that. And then the audiobook that I'm mainly doing right now, I am doing a little bit of Agatha Raisin and the Witch of Wickadden, um, but I'm primarily focusing on, um, just because it is so long, uh, Framley Parsonage by Anthony Trollope and just loving this to bits. It's so good. And I find myself... Um, uh, really emotionally engaged more than I was in the Warden or Barchester Towers. Uh, same amount as Dr. Thorne, except I'm finding it more rewarding because now I'm kind of maybe in the groove of this series. And I did have several people comment when I said, like, I like Dr. Thorne, but I didn't know how well it would stay with me. Um, several people said the next books in the series they thought would. And so, so far I'm finding that to be the case with this one. It's just really, um, getting to me in the best way possible. So I am currently about 125 pages into this and it is, um, as far as a Victorian novel goes, it's not that long. It's around 560 pages, but as far as a, a book nowadays goes, that's kind of long. So yes, but I am now like also, um, I did find it hard to get into a rhythm of it, even though I was doing the audiobook. but now I'm finding that I'm definitely like stuck in and really enjoying it. Uh, then one I will be finishing up is my buddy read of Touch Not the Cat by Mary Stewart. And this is a buddy read with uh, the lovely Doris from Aldi Books and Ange from Beyond the Pages. And uh, this, you know, this year Ange and I are reading through all of the Mary Stewart books. And so then it's fun for some of the months, uh, people like Doris and Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures, ones that they haven't read, they're joining us. So it's cool. And um, this one is so different than her other ones. And I know I, I probably sound like a broken record and I say that about all of them, but this one kind of involves some ESP elements. Um, so it's, it's definitely keeping me on my toes and it doesn't feel routine, which I appreciate. Uh, then one that has been a delight when I actually pick it up, but I find myself... Um, feeling like I need to get through some library books that I checked out. But when I am reading it, I'm really enjoying it. This is Frost Hollow Hall by Emma Carroll. I heard about Emma Carroll from uh, Beth Bonini on Instagram. Her Instagram is just lovely. And if you like modern classics and literary fiction, Beth is a great lady to follow. Uh, and But she talked about Emma Carroll, who writes, you know, historical fiction. And I thought... From what I've read of the synopses of her different books, these seem like really great um, winter reads. So I kind of think I might buy one each winter. Um, and it is a children's novel. So far, I've been really pleased with the writing. Um, it doesn't feel, it, it feels like the writing is really good, but age appropriate for, you know, middle school girls maybe. Um, and it's set in the Victorian era, which is really fun. And uh, it's just about this Frost Hollow Hall uh, and there is a pond where uh, 10 years ago, a boy drowned um, 
when the ice broke. And so then this girl goes there. This is on the back of the book, so I don't feel like I'm spoiling anything. And she falls in the water and then this, this angel comes and rescues her out of it. And so it's kind of how it changes her life in the course of events. And I'm really liking where the plot is going. So kind of this thing that could have been tragic ends up working for the greater good. Uh, yes, so enjoying this one, I do pick it up. Uh, I'm about 115 pages in it and it's around 400 pages, but a very quick, easy read. Uh, then one that this is the one I really want to dedicate some time this afternoon to, and that is The Tenderness of Wolves by Steph Penny. This one, the Costa Book of the Year in 2006, uh, but really neat setting. This takes place in the um, Canadian uh, Northern Territory in 1867. Uh, and so there's, you know, some settlers there and one of the settlers is found scalped and immediately people want to blame uh, indigenous peoples, of course. Um, and but the, it seems like that's just too easy. You know, they're the scapegoats. Uh, so really, really interesting. And um, since it won the Costa Book Award, like it feels very literary. So this to me is a really a good sweet spot maybe for people who like literary fiction and haven't read many mysteries or for myself who reads a lot of mysteries but not as much literary fiction. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this thus far. The writing is pristine. So that's all the uh, reading I'll be planning on doing this weekend. Um, maybe finishing The Tenderness of Wolves and finishing Touch Not the Cat. I'll be happy if I finish those two. So let me know what you're reading and I will see you guys for another uh, video soon. Bye.